Hey there, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in this video, I'm going to fill you in on what it is I do as a software developer. Uh, the reason I wanna do this is because there's a lot of people getting into the field who have some misconceptions, let's say, about what software developers do. Uh, some people think that we're riding unicorns around, typing on computers, just like creating applications from scratch, or that we're at a ping pong table playing ping pong and occasionally writing code and just having like beer at work. And that's not been my experience, either one of those. So I just wanna give a clarification about what it actually is from my perspective. And so hopefully you can get a better sense of what it actually entails. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'm Andy Sterkwitz and I help people start a career in software development. So if you're looking to do a, or get started in a career that you love, that you're passionate about, that you are doing creative and fulfilling work, then I highly recommend subscribing below and hitting the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So without any further ado, let's get into what it is exactly I do. And I boil it down to five things that I've seen that are most consistent I do on sort of a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and that covers mostly everything. So number one is I'm building a new feature. Number two is I'm fixing bugs. Number three is I'm doing continued learning or research. Number four is I'm communicating with someone or a group of people. And then lastly, I'm fixing a production issue or an emergency in the system. So let's go through each one of those. So number one is I'm building a new feature. And this is like the best part of software development, right? So you know, take your favorite social media application, right? Like as an example of building a new feature. Let's say Twitter wanted to add a new feature in their app that you could poke someone, right? Like remember the Facebook poke? I don't even know if that's still around. But say Twitter wants you to be able to poke other users. Well, they've got to obviously build a new feature. And as a software developer, in my experience of building features in some of the applications that I worked on, that is a pretty intensive process because I'm a full stack developer, meaning if I have to build a new feature, I'm tasked with figuring out all the way from the database side, meaning I have to figure out what new tables I have to write, what relationship those tables are gonna have to other tables, down to the server side code, how is the, the server side code need to change? Is there any existing code that I need to understand for the poke to be added to that code and you have to add API endpoints to retrieve that data or create data. And then I also have to go into the user interface or, or client side or front end. And I have to figure out how to write the code to make the nice pretty notification pop up when the, the, the poke happens or a button to poke someone else, right? So the process of building new features is very intensive and it's a lot of fun at smaller companies like I've worked at because I'm doing everything. I don't just focus on front end or back end. I have to do everything. And this is so much fun because you get to understand the, how the current code base works. You get to potentially refactor code to make sure that it works. So that way you can implement the new code you have. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun, but it's not the only thing you're going to be doing because applications aren't constantly changing. A lot of applications out there are pretty static, meaning they're not really adding a lot of new features. This can be very rare or it can be ongoing if, it, if the app is growing or if the app is constantly changing and they're adding new things. And so that really leads into the second thing, which is I fix bugs, right? So any application of any size is gonna have bugs of some sort. Um, even well-tested code is going to have a certain amount of bugs. And you know, like, well, there's always a list of bugs, right? And then there's certain priorities on those bugs. And so as a developer, you're gonna have to go through there, through the list of bugs at times, or you're gonna be assigned certain bugs that you have to fix. And bugs are not straightforward. Like bugs, are not, it's not like a bug is a bug. Like a bug could be as simple as like there's one line of code that needs to be changed. There could be another bug that they can't even figure out if it is an actual bug, meaning they can't even figure out how to reliably reproduce that bug. So you have to do a lot of research and just setting up the system, your local environment or even production, trying to figure out how this bug, if it, if it actually exists, and in what condition it is. So it can be like a lot of freaking work, like just trying to figure out like one simple bug and it's not the sexiest of things, I'll be totally honest with you, but it is a part of life. I think the upside of working with bugs or fixing bugs is that it can be uh, impetus to refactor code. So if I find a bug and I'm like, oh man, this code is poorly written, I can then take the time out to refactor the code. And the refactoring, what I could do is I basically restructure it, reorganize it or rewrite it to make it more maintainable, more readable. So that way somebody later on can go, oh my God, this code is so elegant or just to make the system a little more efficient. So fixing bugs is a significant part of your life as a software developer. Now, the next thing is constantly or continued research, continued development, continued learning 
as a software developer, right? Because the, as you guys should know, if you're getting into this field or if you're even into it, like the pace of learning is so, it's just constant, right? The new things are coming out, new frameworks. You have to even revisit old principles that you've learned, maybe computer science principles that you already knew before, but you have sort of forgotten and haven't been implementing. So part of my job is either, you know, doing research because I'm building a new feature or fixing a bug, or, you know, I just have to learn some new framework or just I want to learn some new technology that I've heard a lot about. And, you know, it could just be because, hey, like I've got nothing else to do and I just want to learn some new cool stuff. But, you know, continue research, continue learning is a big part of what I do. It definitely plays a significant, uh, significant amount of time spent doing it. The fourth thing is just I'll be in some sort of communication, meaning I'll either be in a meeting, right? So the, maybe there's a developer meeting or maybe there's different departments are meeting, but I have to be a part of it. And, you know, just like in any big company, meetings are not always productive. So you're going to be stuck in some meetings sometimes where it's like, do I really need to be here? I could be writing code right now. So there's that. I could be communicating with someone like a project manager or a business analyst trying to figure out, okay, I've got this work item. I'm not clear maybe on something or I need to, I'm questioning why they're doing something, right? You also have, you could be talking to another developer. Maybe you're asking them questions. You're doubting whether the code you just wrote is that efficient, or maybe you're helping out a more junior developer, or maybe you're just talking smack. Who knows what it could be? But a lot of your job will be in some form of communication. You're not just sitting there coding away all the time. And then the fifth thing is fixing production issues. And a production issue is not a bug. A bug is something that can be fixed in a few days, in a few weeks, we don't really care. A production issue is something that's affecting the system. A bug, you could say, I guess, affecting the system that is causing major problems, either the system-wide, either it's causing, causing an outage of some sort, or it's just causing a really important user some problem and they want it to be fixed ASAP. Right. And the way you got to think about this, by the way, is that like, again, I'm at a smaller company. So when something goes wrong, I'm not just a software developer who's like, Hey man, I'm off. It's like, everyone has to drop what they're doing and figure out what's, what the problem is. Number one, number two is how to fix it. And number three is we have to redeploy the application. Now deploying an application, just to kind of give you a sense, it sounds pretty simple, like just, you know, deploy the application. And for some applications, that's really easy. You just press a button, some tests run, and then it deploys. Other applications are much more complicated. They're much more clunky and it requires like the system to go out. And so it's not this easy process where you just deploy, like you have to go through so much. So fixing production issues definitely played a role as a software developer. Don't get me wrong. This wasn't something that was constant, but it's definitely played a role in some of the work that I do. So I really hope that gives you a better sense of what life has been like for me as a software developer so you can maybe get some better expectations. So you're not thinking that you know everything is just about building new features. There's definitely some non-sexy parts, some non-exciting parts, but overall, like it's a great to be a software developer and I highly recommend it if you're trying to get into the field. So thank you so much for watching. I highly recommend liking the video before you leave. And also if you're interested in getting more of my content, I have a free Facebook group you can join where I give you even more content, things that I think will be very helpful. I also have live Q and A events. So if you want to join that group, go to andysterkwitz.com forward slash group, and I will see you there. That's really all I got for now. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, peace out guys, take care and I'll talk to you later.